Aloha and welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe'e, where I have a chance to present some of my friends and some of the good things and as well as the issues that you may be concerned about here in Hawaii. My guest this afternoon is a very good friend. He is a former representative, former state representative was, uh, for 23 years. He is now the chair of the Hawaii Relations, Labor Relations Board, and uh, they get to decide important questions about labor and um, management issues. But um, more importantly, he's got another life where he does some very interesting things for the people of Hawaii. So would you all help me yeah. in welcoming uh, Marcus Oshiro? Chairman Oshiro, hey, I remember oh, when Mark. you uh, when you were the uh, chair of the uh, finance committee yeah. for the state yeah. legislature, and now you got to go back and ask them for money. That's right. <laughs> I have to go hand in hand every year and plead my case. And fortunately, my old buddies and old friends are still there. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So now you're chair, and for yeah. 23 years before that, you were in the state legislature. Um, I wanted to let people know that before that, I used to, um, your dad, your dad was my uh, campaign manager, a very famous, uh, very fantastic person, uh, Bob Oshiro, but we're here to talk about his son, not about the dad, but I, I, what I remember about, about <laughs> the, meeting you was that your dad was my campaign manager, so he would put on all these events. And you would be uh, with the camera, yeah. the old camera, yeah. and you would be actually film these yeah. events. You, yeah. you, you remember doing all yeah. of that? Yeah, Governor, I, I'm glad you remember it because I would go around with a uh, VHS um, camera, a big heavy one uh, with a battery pack, and all the coffee hours we would have, the early breakfast meetings at Wisteria, yes. the events at Dots. Uh, we even went out to uh, Waianae, Nanakuli. Wherever the events were. Yeah, Pearl City, and I, and I took the camera, and we created... Um, um, history! You, you actually recorded <laughs> yeah. history, you know? Yeah. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Well, well I, I didn't uh, have this down on the agenda, but what, what, do you, what has happened to all that? I, I still have them. We've used them before in other activities, and I got to turn them over to Heather Juni. Oh, terrific! And, and I got to yeah. give it to her and have her put it on the public archive. Well, um, for people who, for who reference, may, yeah. may not know, Heather is, uh, has created yeah. a public archive of yeah. many historical yeah. events yeah. in Hawaii. Yeah. And, oh, that's fantastic. So she's been getting all that. these videotapes and audio tapes. All going the work way that back. your father made you do. <laughs> yeah. So what's interesting, well, that in itself is a very interesting story, but you this, uh, somewhere along the way, you uh, went from being in back of a camera to in front of a right. camera. You are actually, uh, you actually uh, do some acting now. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to be cast in Kumukahua's last play of this season, uh, The Beer Can Hat, uh, written by uh, Daryl Lum. Okay. Uh, it's a world premiere, uh, never been uh, done as a stage play. Down at Kumukuhua, 46 Merchant Street. You're familiar with Kumukuhua. Right, right. It's the old uh, King Kamehameha Fifth uh, Post oh, Office that, building. That's right. And thanks to you, back in 1994, Kumukuhua uh, was given a lease through DAGS, uh, Department of Accounting General Services, and they have a lease. Um, yeah, so, they, and they, and so they've been using that building. It's, it's got the, their stage, and it's a a perfect. Per, a permanent home for well, okay. Kumukuhua, you know. I want to come back, and yeah. I want to talk to you about the actual play. But before that, since we're on the subject, tell us about Kumukuhua. Well, what, what is it, and who is it? Kumukuhua came out in the early 70s, 70, 71, uh, brainchild of some graduate students, uh, uh, Professor Emeritus Dennis Carroll at the UH uh, Drama Department. Um, to really create a, a theater uh, plays, theater theme mission for locally produced plays, local themes, local writers, local performers, exclusively. Wow. And that was back in the 70s. You know? So we're 50 years down the road, and that's why Kumakua is so important. It, it's for the local people, local playwrights, 
local themes. So it gives them a chance to express their talent. Yeah, this is all of Hawaii's stories, you know, Hawaii story, Hawaii's people's stories. And these are stories that deal with some of the hot button issues of homelessness, you know, drugs, um, some issues of land use, water use, um, very important contemporary issues, but done on stage in a theatrical manner. Right. Um, one of a kind, you won't find any other theater in the Has state there been like any, any uh, transition from the small stage at Kumakahua, which is the types of plays you do it, to, uh, you know... This, this, this is still a small stage. <laughs> it's, it's like off-off-Broadway in a hundred seats. Okay? Yeah, but has anyone actually transitioned? Uh, I, I know, for example, that, oh, what's her name? The Pigeon... The, the Lee, Lee Cataluna. Lee Cataluna yeah. did a couple of plays. Yes, Lee has done there. Vicky Nubo has done there. Uh, um, well, a long time ago, yeah. the first, uh, she did the fairy tales. Um, yeah, yeah. I forgot uh, the name of the playwright. How can I do Lisa this? Lisa Matsumoto. Lisa. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah. And she, you know, Lisa, forgive me. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why I, I forgot your name, but she's, she, uh, she uh, began doing um, local plays. Right. And, but what you have done has gone way beyond. Yeah, you know, it's still a very intimate theater, 100 seats, 110 seats. Um, you are right there with the performers, and the performers are right there with the audience. You know, there's a relationship, there's an energy, there's a resonance that occurs uh, during the performance. And um, it's very intimate. You can, you can feel and see. And you can really any, get into the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, it cuts right through everything. Well, I think, I think oh. that's so important, you know. And so we, you, you are in the last play of the season. Yeah, the beer can hat. Um, it's about two young uh, boys in high school. One's a special needs, intellectually challenged young man. But this is in the, it's not in high school today. It's high school back in 1970. 1970, 1972, uh, he's, he has one good friend who's a regular or normal type of child, uh, maybe college bound, um, but he suffers all the effects of being a special needs, unique child, um, broken household, single family household. I play his father. Really? I play his father. I am, I am um, somewhat unemployed or unemployable. I, I have a substance abuse problem. Maybe I drink too much. And I have my own issues about, you know, being a single parent, raising a special needs child. You so know. you're a single parent raising a special... This, this is heavy stuff. Yeah, in, in, the, in the 70s, right? You know, yeah. Before we learned about IDEA and, and you know, all this kind of all services. all that stuff. Yeah, but, but despite that, um, 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 Bobo... Um, Who is the special needs yeah, child? Yeah, Bobo, yeah. Um, sells newspapers. And that's the connectivity between Bobo and his good friend Junior. They both sell newspapers. Bobo does it on the streets in front of the Ching store, the mom and pop store in the community. Right. Rural community could be Honoka, could be Waiwa. Well, it could be where we grew up. Exactly. Right. No, no, right in the a, 70s, right? Right, right. Right, right. So. But that's, that's it, and it, the, the story tells about how this, 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 this boy, special needs boy, overcomes the adversity of his household, of his schoolmates, of the bullies, and the people who come into his life and help him, encourage him, you know, whether it's on the street or at the carnival, you know. No, no, his father, who you play, uh, is not the nicest character. No, you, you come to the show and you, you can judge for yourself, but my, my wife tells me you're not a likable guy. <laughs> but you are a likable guy. You're just playing an unlikable guy. Right? Yeah, yeah, if, if I do my job, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, one of the interesting things about all of this is, th is, is that Kumakuhua does deal with these types of real issues in Hawaii. Um, because what you're describing, well, first of all, the setting is back in a historically memorable time for many of us right. who grew up in the country. But the issues of what special needs children face is, um, well, you know, let's, let's talk about that. Has, has that gotten any better today, or do they face the same challenges? Or? They, they face the same challenges, but I think I would expand it to a larger class of young adults. Uh, those who are bullied, 
whatever they might be, whatever their, their challenge intellectually, physically. That's a really interesting idea. Even, even behaviorally as adolescents, right? You know, developing who they are, why am I here, what's my role, purpose. You know, they're going through this whole thing as young adults. Right. And they've right. been challenged on so many fronts that perhaps you and I weren't when we were growing up. So the idea of having a friend or two is important. And so what is it about this friendship that uh, seems to make everything work? It's all about having that one individual in your life that cares about you, understands you. and is Even willing, if it's a peer. Yeah, and is willing to stand up for you, defend you, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, that, 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 means, that means everything to this young man, having that one friend, you know. Yeah, even if, even if the situation sort of continues, right. but at least having somebody with you yeah, yeah, means so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think well, it, it meant so much to all of us when we were in school. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. So know, it's, 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 it's something that everyone can relate to growing up during that period of adolescence and discovering who you are. And you know, I think today in this modern age of bullying and Facebook and Twitter and Yeah, tweets, all the social media exactly. that's, that's pounding it, on kids. Exactly, you know? yeah. So I, I think there's a message there uh, for today's audience of, of, of being aware of how we treat each other and the effects we have on each other, you know? Right. So let, let me say something. Yeah. Now, this play was written by, well, first of all, the name of the play, we, we unfortunately didn't say that as often yeah. as we should, but the name of the play that you're in is called the... Um, it's not called D, it's called... <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, it's called The Beer. Can yes. hat. Yeah, the beer can hat. You remember those beer can hats? Yeah, I yeah, think your yeah. auntie and my auntie, or, you know, would crochet <laughs> the yarn <laughs> out there. And we would cut with a uh, metal scissors, you know, the, the beer can, Primo. Yeah, you're right. Or right. Only, or Budweiser. Uh, you know, I haven't seen beer can hat hats in a long time. Well, That's you, right. If you come to the show, you'll see you see authentic beer can, beer can. <laughs> can. <laughs> But what's the symbolism? Why? You, you know, you know, the beer can hat, you know, is, of course, a recycled item. You know, it's, 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 it's handcrafted. It's very unique to this time, that tradition. And it's something that ties everyone together. Everyone had a beer can hat. That was cool, right? Yeah, it was. You wanted to have a beer was. can hat, right? And that was before recycling really became a big deal with cans. Or we did that already, right? Just as much as redeeming bottles. You remember? Right, right, right. Collecting bottles right, right, in the right, cases right, and taking right, them to the redemption right, center. And getting 50 cents a case, yeah. yeah remember right. that? Remember yeah, that I primo beer do. or the beer bottle? I mean, like soda, soda bottles, right? Yeah. Um, so this is so this is this story is built around the idea of creating something, recycling something special, something special, something unique out of something that may be discarded and you may throw away, find no value in. But in the hands of the right parties or right persons, it tremendous value, <laughs> beautiful, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The most precious thing for this. So it was this, but the play was written by. Daryl Lum. Daryl Lum. Yeah. Now, who is Daryl Lum? Yeah, Daryl Lum is a well-known uh, Hawaii playwright, um, uh, um, poet, founder of um, Bamboo Ridge Press. You know, right, Bamboo Ridge right. has been around. So our people, yeah. Yeah, you got to know Bamboo Ridge Press has been around for, I think, 50 years or so. And, and it's basically been writing local stories about local Local stories, parties. local poetry, um, local themes, uh, and publishing it. Actually publishing it and having a market and... Getting it out there for people to enjoy. Well, I tell you what, we're going to come right back um, right after this short break. And I want to get from, you know, the, to the Daryl Lums and, 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 and this story. Because I, one of the interesting things is that when you set this story in the 1970s, it, uh, the language that you spoke oh. is going to be uh, <laughs> part of the play. Yeah. So everybody will be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. 
We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so, so much. much. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e, and we have an interesting guest this afternoon, the chairperson of the Labor Relations Board, who actually is pursuing his passion, which is to be an actor in local plays and uh, in a local theater right next door to the studio here at the Kamehameha 5th uh, building, and it's on the corner of Merchant and Bethel. That's right. The corner of Merchant and Bethel. And for all of you who are interested in seeing topical issues being uh, played out and discussed uh, 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 right uh, next door at the uh, Kumukahua uh, Theater. So I want to call that to their, everybody's attention. Thank you. All right. But for those of you who have a question and would like to call in, our number is 808-374-2014. So we're back again with Marcus. Now, tell me, Marcus, tell me more about, first of all, tell me more about Lum's vision when he, uh, when he wrote the, um, this uh, play, The Beer Can Hat. Daryl, he wrote this a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, back in the 70s. Um, and since then, he has done many, uh, many oh, yeah. more spectacular things. Yeah. And so this was a gem that was hidden out yeah, there. Yeah, this is something that he kept, um, um, you know, out of circulation for a while. I think he really thought about it. Just recently did the uh, screenplay. I think screenplay and also this is a stage play, of course. World premiere. It hasn't been staged before anywhere, um, but this is the first time at Kumokuhua. Um he told me that this is actually part of a story that I think he and his wife, uh, through their observation as, as, as teachers, knew about uh, children who at that time, young, young, young adults at that time, um, who lived like this, you know, lived very poor, uh, you know. You know well, households. oftentimes back in those days, yeah. and probably today, unfortunately, yeah. a lot of times these children, because they're, they're difficult, yeah. and so they are... People find dealing with them difficult, and so some oftentimes they're abused, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and it's uh, probably a lot, of, um, a lot of emotion in the play, I would think, anyway. You got to come see the play. <laughs> yeah, well, we're hoping that, I'm hoping that my audience will be out I, I, there. No, I, 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 think, I think they will. They'll, they'll see, um, they might see themselves. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll see uh, others they know. So you play the dad. I play the, I play the dad. And what's really interesting is that I'm somewhat related to the actor um, who plays Bobo, my, my son. Uh, this is how small Hawaii is, such a small place. Uh, he actually was raised by his grandfather in Wahiawa. Um, okay. The Hagio family who ran the Hagio service station, Chevron service station in Wahiawa. Um, he's also the nephew of... Um, my, my, my cousin, Charlene, who was at one time married to his uncle. Oh, wow. So, so this is like so, Ohana. Yeah, yeah, it's like family, right? right. So, you know, it's, 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 you know, that's how Hawaii is, right? We're, you know, we're so close, right? But the story, I, I mean, I am so fascinated by the story. Actually, I can't wait to see it because I am so yeah. fascinated by the story that... Um, I think it's so relevant as we were talking about to today's day and age. Now, one of the interesting things about this play and about many of the other plays at Komukahu is the fact that it's often done in in dialect. In uh, with uh, it's it's done in the Creole Hawaiian Creole language. Hawaiian pidgin, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Hawaiian pidgin. It's. Um, in fact, it's interesting because unlike most theaters where you have to speak the King's English or proper English, um, you have to have the ability to speak uh, and use the pidgin uh, um, language on stage in a theatrical manner. It's not easy. I mean, because I, I, I've watched people try to speak pidgin, even those that grew up speaking it. But when they try to do it, it loses something. You know, it, it gets a little pretentious. 
Yeah, yeah. So you have to, um, you know, for people, people like me, I'm, thank God, goodness, I'm Wahewa. Um, I grew up with that language. That was the language we spoke. Um, but, you know, um, it, it tells you about the play. It tells you about the culture. It tells you about the people. And, you know, the history of the language, right? Well, really, I mean, really, right. it's not. And, and, you know, there was uh, the thing about Pigeon is that it wasn't necessarily the same in every place. Right. But if you heard somebody speak it, and you grew up speaking it, you would instantly recognize that this is the person that would, could probably understand you, even if they grew up in Wahiawa or Honaka or someplace yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then you, you, you will hear uh, phrases that um, immediately you will connect with, you will know the meaning of it. Um, you know, the word troll, for example. <laughs> Troll, right? Yeah. Okay, not throw, but troll, right? You know, you know what that means, right? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's sort of interesting, and and I and I've had this discussion. Uh, is that I, I think that uh, pidgin English and and is not only vocabulary. See, that's what I I think yeah. the real challenge of the um, the actor of yourself is. Well, first of all, you got to sound authentic, so. The dialogue, the written dialogue itself yeah. needs to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not just saying the word, is saying, the, using the right, uh, what do you call it, uh, right pronunciation. Uh, pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and it, 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 because you can, you can overdo it, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, uh, so what do you do? I mean, what do you do? You train for it? I mean, well, you, I, I, you read the script? No, I, I'm, I'm blessed, I think. <laughs> it's blessed by... Well, you're blessed by, that in, you... Indoctrination, I guess. No, I really, I really think what so. Where do you go to high school? Well, I went to Lelawa High School, the best yeah, high school in Lelawa. That's the best, <laughs> the best, one of the best places to learn how to speak. You the, know, but uh, at the same time, you know, that's why I got turned on to uh, English literature. I got turned on to theater, and it was through Roberta Tom, my um, senior high school teacher, who gave me a dare of this, you know, surfer jock to try something different, you know? Right, right, you know, right. You know, to memorize lines and to be disciplined and know about acting and... It was Roberta Tan that gave me the acting bug. And she was, she was your uh, oh, drama it, teacher? No, she was an English teacher. But, English but, teacher. But, but, but for the senior year, we did a drama production, and she cast me in the diary of Anne Frank, and I played Mr. Crawler, and I had to speak proper English and memorize my lines and cues and all those kind of stuff. But I had such a thrill entertaining my friends. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting? Because we just had this discussion, actually, uh, this, today I just had this discussion. And I, 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 I actually made a, a statement, it's a proposition. I said, you can, you can uh, speak or say, say, you can say an entire sentence in proper English but say it with the right accent, and everybody will know that you went to Lelihua High School. I, I mean, just by, by the way, you know, you said cho, you know, it's, or, or the way you, you don't use the THs, you know, like it's not this or that or there, it's this, that, you yes, know. Yes. And, and you, but when you, when you hear somebody say that, bam, there's a relationship, yeah. you know, because uh, we have the same background. Yeah. And is, is, there, is there an attempt? Uh, what, what are we doing here when we write plays in Pigeon? I, are we trying to be authentic or are we trying to perpetuate the language or maybe both? I think, I think both. And I think that's why for me as an actor, performer, I want to honor the script. I want to honor the playwright's choice with choosing da or yeah. that yeah, yeah, versus yeah. this or that. that. Yeah. And, and I think, you know... Or oh, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're yeah, sitting here yeah. and we started right. to slip into that right. accent. Right. And, 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 and there's a reason for the playwright, for Darrow's great, great, great work, you know, to make that choice. And there's a reason why he made that choice. Because he wanted to show a moment in time and a culture in yeah. time, I yeah. would presume, yeah. you yeah. know. I think, I think so. He wanted to highlight that and celebrate, you know, the relationships that form around this, you know. Of so, so the, you know, when you when is this your first uh, play that you've done uh, in uh, Pigeon? No, no. You've done this before. Yeah, yeah. 
So what, yeah. what else? What else? Have well, you... no, I've, I've done other plays at Komokuho. I did, you know, things with um, Id Sakamoto's place, you know, Life of the Land, Corner Coffee. Oh, wow. Aloha, Las Vegas. You know. See, this is like a, a whole aspect of yourself that uh, I don't think a lot of people know about, you know? Oh, you that thought you're you, an actor. Well, you thought I was acting at the state capitol, right? <laughs> well, well, yeah, I thought you were pretty good at it, but, <laughs> but as a politician, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think as an actor, there's a burden because you're actually communicating, a, you're trying to make a... Uh, yeah. something a different character yeah, no, I, no, I, I've, been, I've been really really blessed to work with great um, performers um, you know just real high class performers um, great uh, directors um, and just 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 become a different person you know live that person's life you know get into that person you know and really feel what they feel yeah really empathetic you know about that person so even with this character I'm playing in this no, now you, do you you, no, have, you have some empathy for I, the I do I, I do I, you know you gotta get into the, the, the psyche of this individual how who what where when how you know who, how is why is he the way he is today you know well, where where is he from what's right, his right. What's, what's his, his story, story? Right, and right. how does he get to be right who were his parents yeah. and how does he get to be a single parent yeah, or something like that? Exactly. So uh, when does the beer can hat uh, start? I mean, it, where, it, is, it, it, is it, it happening now? No, it's, it's, it opens on May 23rd at 8 o'clock. May 23rd, 8 o'clock at Kumakahua, which is located on the corner of Bethel and Merchant Street in downtown Honolulu, right? That's right, right. and it runs for uh, four Four weeks, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 8 o'clock p.m., 2 o'clock matinee on Sundays. Call, get, get your tickets. You know? Get your tickets. So we want to invite everybody. Um, this will be exciting. This is about Hawaii. This is about some very important issues in the state of Hawaii. And uh, you get to see uh, Marcus, <laughs> a chair of the no. uh, Hawaii Labor Relations Board, up there speaking excellent uh, <laughs> pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Which he uh, actually got uh, polished up at uh, Lelehua High School. Right. So, Al Marcus, thank you very much. And everybody, the name is Beer Can Hat. Go see it. Kumukahua Theater. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>